Hello, I'm Solar Cross, and today I will comment on the recent announcement that Warhammer 40k will get a ninth edition coming out soon. First thing I should say is probably not so very unexpected because uh, it's been about three years since the eighth edition came out, and eighth edition came out three years after seventh. So it's about on time if you go by the recent release cycle of previous editions. Although the earlier editions did tend to have a longer run of things. First edition lasted about six years and second edition ran for about five years. Three years is a bit short for an edition to last I would say. When you invest a lot in the books of a particular edition it's a, it is a bit unpleasant to find just a few years later that it's all obsolete. However, the core rules of 9th edition apparently are going to be free and it's not going to be such a huge break with the past as was 8th edition. So it won't invalidate any codexes you have already for 8th edition. I think the campaign books are supposed to be still compatible with it as well. So of course, the free rules of this edition will work pretty much the same way it did in 8th edition. It'll be the core rules, and it'll be just enough to give you sort of a taster of, the, of how to play. It'll be the foundation of the game, but it won't be all the rules that you would want eventually. So, um, you know you will eventually want to get the hardback or the box set whichever has the more complete version of the rules so I'm asking myself am I tempted by 9th edition of course if you're a tournament player or you play in games workshop stores you you pretty much got to buy in uh, to a new edition but if you play at home and just with friends you know, there's no great pressure to jump onto a new edition, I think. You can, and, a lot, and some of us do, that we just play the older, whichever edition we first jumped in on. Okay, so let's have a look at the nine great things that um, the Games Workshop have promised us for this new edition. Hello and good day. My name is James Workshop and I am here to tell you, yes, you, nine great things about the new edition of Warhammer 40,000. Are you ready? You had better be. Now strap yourself in and let us begin. I love it when it rhymes. One, Warhammer 40,000 has been polished to perfection. Thousands of hours of feedback and innovation have refined the game you love into a gaming experience as smooth as a Necron's shiny head. The first great thing is it's a refinement. The game is not going to change so substantially from 8th. This is a great thing. You don't want a brand new version of the game every edition. For those that like to track with whatever's the most current version, you don't want to have to relearn the game every time. So if, if if the new version is just a refinement and so uh, tweaks on on a, on a basically familiar base, then I think that's that is a good that is a good thing. And I'm sure most of us will be looking forward to a modest change from eighth edition rather than something dramatic as happened with 7th to 8th edition. As much as some people might have thought 7th needed a complete revamp, it, it is a big change. and You have to learn new rules, and buy new books and all this. 2. The most immersive system for narrative play ever! The all-new Crusade system links your games. Earn battle honors, experience, and new rules for your army. It's time to toughen up, kid. Take your recruits from green to me. The great thing number two is that there'll be a new narrative play style of game, which will allow troop advancement. You'll gain experience points or something. I, I suppose it sounds a bit like 
campaign mode for kill team perhaps where your troops gain experience in, from successful battles within a context of a campaign i suppose so that sounds interesting how well it works or work on the scale of 40k i'm not sure because it might get kind of cumbersome so i think in warhammer fantasy we did have some kinds of campaign campaign style campaigns where you could where your troops would change and develop with battles and i don't know that was too cumbersome so perhaps it's something modeled on that interesting we'll, we'll have to see what we get there three everyone loves command points so now everyone gets more expect less soup and more super soldiers okay great thing number three more command points well okay four tanks are back on track your armored behemoths been getting bogged down by pesky horrid grots or squishy gaunts no more tanks can shoot in combat blast foes at point blank range and keep on rolling so great thing number four is tanks can now shoot in close combat okay i know a lot of people thought that was a needed something the eighth edition needed that one of the few things that eighth edition have got wrong so it shows that they're they are listening to the, to the community five terrain's been rebuilt from the ground up want to defend a building getting bonuses while you do absolutely want to sneak up on your opponent using terrain to block their line of sight we've got you covered okay so great thing number four is there's going to be a stealth system or of some kind and it's always quite a tricky thing to do with tabletop war games because um obviously how do you move hidden it's not like computer games where you the computer can hide things and keep track of things whereas on a tabletop war game uh you also need the position of models the position of units to be tracked but if it's going to be hidden from the other player i don't you, you, so it, you can't really do that but we'll have to see how they do it but it's it might just be it, we'll have to see what happens but it might just be fairly conventional something like a bit buffed up cover save system i don't know maybe strong to hit penalties for without if you haven't got line of sight something like this but that's not true stealth i mean it's not literally not knowing what's there you know you can see them you know they're there and you can react to them but you can't maybe target them or something we'll have to see we'll have to see but i would i would really be interested in a tabletop war game that had a decent stealth system that wasn't that's that literally did have hidden units that you could you know i mean there's not great options for doing that i was it's one of the harder things to do want to run screaming at your opponent with your chainsaw raised and a hymn to the emperor on your lips not completely relevant to this section of the video but also yes great thing number five melee is still a thing okay we i'm sure we pretty much expected that would stay be a, that's always going to be a thing with 40k melee 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 because it's sword and sorcery in space and of course it's just heroic isn't it bashing people about with a chainsaw unlike shooting them like a cowardly tau six warhammer 40,000 at every size of game from lunch break combat patrols with your new army to crushing your friends beneath the iron boots of your full collection we have balanced the scales great thing number six is scalability it uh, the rule set is promising to be suitable for very small quick games as well as very large games involving vast collections of models i'm not sure how different that will be from any other 
gamer 40k Seven. tactical power at your fingertips strategic reserves have changed allowing you to strike your enemies from all angles think you're the cleverest general among your friends time to prove it sunshine hit them where it hurts great thing number seven is the reserves are getting uh, fixed or made more flexible or you're going to get more control over it i'm not sure yet sounds fun eight big guns never tire and firepower feels great explosive weapons deal maximum hits to hordes as they swarm across the battlefield so bring your favorite guns to the party and get the job done it's time to have a blast okay so great thing number eight does seem like horde armies are not going to be are going to get a bit of a nerf that um there will be some counters to them in the form of blast weapons so a bit of a downer perhaps for the all grot armies that some people like to field um guardsmen armies swarms of penals penal convicts that might um all go up in smoke nine Aircraft take flight. Soar across the battlefield, ignore intervening models, and return for another attack run. It's time for aircraft to feel aircrafty. Pew pew noise is optional, but highly recommended. New Warhammer 40,000 coming soon. Pew pew. Great thing number nine Freedom of the Skies. So uh, flyers are going to get a major overhaul, it seems, and so that they act more flyery, which is something I think uh, definitely was was needed in 40k. The rules for flyers are always very peculiar, especially when you can consider how small the tabletop is relative to the size of the models. Those things should be whizzing past, you know, just coming off one, coming on one side, coming off one the other side of the table in fractions of a turn so the way yeah so uh and and if there was there is one game i think does that does aircraft pretty well and that is drop zone commander uh if you've ever played that you know what i mean so if it if 40k became a bit more like that that would probably be a big improvement really that's the trailer um for and the great things being promised uh my feeling is i'm mostly just interested in how these the, th the three big changes to the rules seem to be this crusade campaign system and the other thing being the stealth system and the final thing being what they do with the flyers i just from a game's design point of view, I would like to know what's going to, what, how that's going to be done, and how that's going to be implemented. Other than that, I'm not in any great rush to buy this, I'll be honest. Um, I mean, at the moment, because of the coronavirus, it's not going to be tournaments for a while. So uh, there's not going to be a great pressure to buy to get the, the current the latest edition for anyone who's playing tournaments because there are no tournaments <laughs> as far as i know um perhaps they're coming back i don't know all right so just speaking for myself i don't know that i'm in a great rush to buy this buy into this i mean i'll obviously take a look at the free rules when they come out but so from various other things that have been teased and leaked it does look like the box set will be Necrons and Primaris Space Marines. I I have to I have to say I'm not really interested in, in either faction at all, so there would be nothing in it for me. Though I think Necrons have never had a go at the box set. So that's probably a good thing for the for Necron players. And it's probably a shrewd choice in other ways because I mean the, the starter box sets the box sets are a great way for people to to bring new wet people into the game at that stage right because it's a, it's relatively good value usually they are and you get a fairly complete small force and necrons are very easy to paint of course 
So um, that's they're very beginner friendly as far as the, the hobby side of things goes. So I can see that being a good choice for a starter box. Space Marines, well, they have to do Space Marines, I guess, because that's just the that's just the 40k thing, you know. Every 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 edition is all about the Space Marines. Uh, personally, I I I could live with a fewer Space Marines in, in, because. They're only supposed to be a elite force and not you know I mean if you go go to a gaming event or whatever, it's like more than half the players are fielding space marines, so it's half the time they're having civil wars with space marines fighting space marines. Oh, I think we need more Xenos really, but um that's down to the players of course. If you like this video then why don't you like, subscribe, share, and comment? Then you can probably like this video too.